What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Man, we've got a lot of catching up to do. So, I don't really know what this video is going to be just yet. I'm just calling it the square body shop hangout because we've got a lot of projects to work on between the RC four wheel drive K10 build off and my shop truck release um, kind of happening around the same time. Um, yeah, you can see I've got the black body here on my chassis. This is the one with the engine bay now that RC four wheel drive offers. So we're going to cover what it takes to fit that on my chassis uh, because I know that's a much more affordable option than doing this full engine bay. I mean, those SSD engines are, are affordable, but it's a more complete solution. It's easier and simpler to deal with. So definitely going to cover that. Um, also, you see we're going to have to cut some. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do as far as I'm playing the, the square body shuffle here. I got four chassis and three bodies, so I don't know which I'm going to do yet. I've got three more builds in mind. Um, I would like to leave the black body on the chassis it came on and do a build, but I know that's not going to win the build off. So I've got the other body back there that I've patinaed already, and I've got that on the original chassis that the blue body came on. And that one's been lowered a little bit. I've got some wheels on it. Kind of getting a, a, a vibe with it. I'm waiting on some parts to come back in stock with RC4 Drive. The two-piece grills are sold out right now. I'm on the waiting list for that. So we've got till March 31st on the uh, K10 build-off. And uh, they got all the information on their social medias and on their blog and things like that through RC4 Drive. They're doing two separate ones. So they're doing one for team drivers and one for the community. Everybody that's got one of the trucks. Real quick, the rules for that were, has to be a Scottsdale body, no K5 conversions, unfortunately. Um, has to be an RC4 drive chassis, has a run and drive, got to send three high quality outdoor picks and a video of it running. And that's in, by March 31st. So um, yeah, look forward to seeing what y'all do with that. Like I said, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing with that. Um, I'll be with the team drivers. Um, me and Jeremy are going to have a heated battle with each other. <laughs> even though neither of us are going to win but it's still going to be fun so uh, I don't know what I'm doing I totally intended to leave the black truck alone I've got some wheels and tires coming for that and uh, just set it here on these white wheels that we did in the previous video and man they look good so we're going to cover that first I'm going to get to chopping on this chassis show you it, it doesn't clear the front shock towers on the shop truck kit um, just a little bit so we'll show you some ways around that and uh, yeah, figure it out as we go I did want to thank everybody that picked up a shop truck kit. They sold out in under around three hours. I couldn't believe that. Um, I am going to be working some more on some more orders. That information will probably be out before this video. Uh, just uh, if you're looking to get one, check out uh, my Facebook and Instagram. I'll keep everybody updated there. And I'll also put some information on the website as well. The truck is still listed on the website. If you want to go check those out, RC4, RC4 truck. It's going to be confusing. RCEveryday.com. Um, <clears throat> it has a list in there of all the parts needed to complete it shows you what's included it has link to the video of assembly the link to the video of me developing the product and uh all the resources are there and also have the parts list on the youtube video as well if you're already here on youtube and want to check it out i've um, got all the information out i've tried to get ahead of it with this kit unlike the rat rods where they kind of came out and then i'm having to answer a million questions individually so i put all the information out i've took the time made the instruction video totally in-depth and uh trying to get all the information out before you buy it so you know what you're getting into and you know what what it takes to complete it but anyways let's take a look at this so you can see where my body mount is here it's hard to see on the black um we're about uh, almost half an inch too high so we're setting the shock towers are sitting on the uh, engine bay on this body so real easy solution is going to be just to chop those shock mounts down All right, um, just a warning that uh, nylon 12 that these are printed in cuts like molten lava. So definitely wear some eye protection. My eyelid is gonna be burning for a while. Uh, <laughs> um, I cleaned it up best I could. It is black on the inside, which is kind of weird because they call that finish the natural gray, but it's uh, apparently naturally black, which would look cooler. I don't know. I don't understand how all that works, but <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see we just have three holes now. Um, I definitely recommend doing that before you put all the truck together. Um, I kept hitting the wheel on the belt sander, spinning 100 miles an hour. So the bearings are good. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this body on and see how this thing looks. Because that's that's what we're after here. I want to see what this looks like on these wheels. All right. Still setting up a little bit in the front. Just because we don't have a motor or anything in it. Uh, the mounts are on. 
I can really look under there and see how we're clearing. It might still be sitting on there a little bit. Looks like our body mounts are pushed up just a, just a little. So it is still interfering with that. Let me flip this over and get you a better look. All right, so you can see there it's still hitting that inside edge. So it doesn't quite sit in those little areas here. I was hoping it would. So we're hitting that lip up here. Um, we could take a little bit off of that part of the engine bay because I don't believe there's anything there, but I don't know. I don't want to hack that truck up yet. Um, yeah, we definitely need to go down. You can see that body mount is pulled down just a little bit. So let's take a little bit more off. All right, we're getting down. That's the other screw hole. You see that gap there. So fortunately, we got to get a little deeper into that than I was hoping. Now I only have two shock options, but I definitely think it'll fit now. Well, it got a little lower, but it's still pushing up on it a little bit. We'd have to take another uh, four millimeter off, I think. And that would pretty much, we're going to be down to one shock mount now. And uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Dang it. I was hoping we could just trim a little off the top and make it work, but... It is what it is. I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose. The chassis kits were designed for the scale engine to have a full engine bay. You open the hood, you see the frame, you see the suspension, you see the engine. So we've got an option for it. I was hoping it would work with this option. I didn't know about this product when I designed all of this, or we might have taken it into consideration, but uh, the kits were already in production when uh, I was made aware of this engine bay. So I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and shave this one down even more because I've already butchered them up so bad and uh we'll make it fit and we'll see what it actually takes in case you really want to do it um it's still an option but i i would be leery of only having one shock mount because like i said this doesn't have a motor or a transmission so we're sitting really light in the front and only having one shock option you'd have to start really getting into the springs and things to uh make it work but it's doable it's not it's not impossible at all that's the uh joy of these things you can still make anything work you just take the time and play with the springs but all right, well, I got them shaved down. I got them pretty cleaned up, looking good. That only leaves us with one shock mount with a 50 millimeter shock. Um, I know from testing that that will hold the weight of the transmission. It'll droop a little bit. <clears throat> you can always play with the springs inside of there to stiffen it up if you uh, need to. So let's see if it clears because we can't really take any more. We're pretty much flush with the top of the shock mount. All right, so it's it's touching. It's still touching in the, it's in there though. <laughs> I can't believe it was that close. It didn't look like it had that much space. We were only up from the mount. It's like a quarter inch and we've taken half an inch off of that, but it is what it is, but it is a, a option. If that's something you want to do, um, 50 millimeter shocks. Let me show you the engine bay in here. Still looks good. Everything's jiving. I didn't cut the truck one bit, I made it all the mods on the chassis. So, it is a nice complete look. I, I get it. I know some people are going to hate it because it's not a real engine. It doesn't have this and that. And I get that too. But those real engines, you know, if you go like the RC4 Drive V8, you're, you're in a, a fortune for that motor and transmission and accessories and all of that. So this is a nice affordable option. I think with all, with the tray and both option sets, you're in like 50, 60 bucks, what it looked like. Um, and again, I talked about it in the unboxing video, the valve cover and intake and stuff is interchangeable with the other V8. So yeah. And apparently I, I don't, I'm guessing somebody was telling me the other option set, this doesn't even have said it had like a scale jack and some other things that go in the engine bay. So I'm going to check that out, pick one of those up so we can uh, finish it out. Um, I do want to try to change out the valve covers. I've got some of the aluminum ones. I actually kind of like the way this looks though. I like the clean stock look. I like the stock look and breather. I don't know. We need to see if it'll work, but I don't want to change mine. And uh, as somebody pointed out, the keen observer, the uh, firing order is wrong. So we're just going to misfire, but we'll pretend. <laughs> I hate doing pl plug wires on everything, and those are already in so perfectly and nice. I'm not going to, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> All right. So moving on, I've got some of these. These are from... ASA 3 scale productions, uh, I believe on Etsy. Um, I've used some of his th printed stuff before. It's pretty nice. I got a roll pan and I actually bought two of them thinking about these trucks. And uh, unfortunately, they don't really fit the Scottsdale. So I'm going to pull this bumper off and take a look. Uh, my buddy Wayne, Wayne's RC World, he's got the only tester of the shop truck. 
And of course his first thing to do was put a roll pan on and it's a little narrow, he said. So apparently there's a little bit different in width between the Blazer bodies and the Scottsdales. So I'm gonna pull this off. Wow, that's a long screw. Come on. Like their uh, M3 coarse thread screws. Works great for 3D printed stuff. Come on, get off there. So the biggest problem, I know a lot of people love to hate on the RC4 drive bodies for the massive bumpers and the massive mirrors. Um, you get it, they made it because it's durable, bigger, it's beefier, um, doesn't look the best, but it is what it is. So this one, we're just a smidge off. It's not as bad as I've seen some others. Um, let me grab the other one I got and we'll test it too, just to see if there's consistency in the print. Um, it just, yeah, it's just about a quarter, maybe an, it's an eighth inch short. Yep, just a, just a little bit. So it'd still look good on here. I'm not going to mold it in. Wayne molded his all in and uh, made it look fantastic. So <laughs> I'm not a big body work guy. So I don't know. We could probably use it. It would probably do just fine. Um, just use some thick two-sided tape and attach it to the inside of the fenders. Um, the only hang up I have with it is getting it to match the body. Be shiny and black. I, I'm not a shiny paint guy. So that might be a challenge on that. I did have another option that I've had suggested to me before. I've got the Traxxas bumpers, and I've seen it done on the rear, but the fronts, I think, are a little off. So I'm going to compare those and see how that looks as well. I know it's kind of hard to see upside down what it actually looks like on here. Come on. So that's not too far off. We could split the difference. I think it could be made to look pretty good. I don't like that edge right here. So you've got this hard line and this is kind of radius to the top. Kind of looks a little funky. I see why Wayne molds them in all the time. But still, it's a nice product. It's very thick. It's got a little flex to it. Good 3D printed stuff. These aren't, uh, this isn't like the kit parts. This is still a filament print. You can see the lines in it. But it's made of a very good material. I don't know what he's using. Probably, definitely something nylon. So definitely a nice part. It just doesn't have the, the same kind of grain as the kit parts have. So let me find the Traxxas rear bumper. I've already taken them apart, pulled them off their mounts. That's the front. That's the rear. And I got this shrink wrap on them. So you can see compared to the RC four-wheel drive bumper, they are drastically different. Um, it's pretty much the same width. It doesn't have the rivets on it. And there's a lot of different ones of these too. Uh, so I made sure I found the ones for the, the K5 Blazer that Traxxas has. Uh, the ones off of the older K5 Blazer, I think, actually have the rivets. I had that had cellophane on it, and it was still scratched. So that one can recess a little bit more. We have absolutely... The mounts almost line up. I mean, they're in different directions, but they almost line up. Let's just play with some of this for a minute. No, nope, that mount won't work. Oh, now we got screws in our interior. Awesome. Just looking at different options here. Let me let me do some brainstorming and see the front. I did check on my other truck already. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the rear, as it should be, um, but it's still just a hair wide for the for these bodies. But we'll we'll compare that here in a second. Let me do some brainstorming on this rear. See if we can at least mock it up and see what it looks like. All right, so I've got. <laughs> see, I got all this stuff sitting here. I'm laughing because I, I have all this junk just laying around and uh, things just happen to work out from the junk pile. So I'm having one little issue because this is the prototype chassis. The rails are longer in the back, so our tailgate will not open. Um, I need to just chop that down if I'm going to use this chassis for anything. I had some servo mounts. I don't know what these are from. Um, they're aluminum. It'd be better if they were plastic. The holes on the Traxxas rear bumper line up with these, so all you need is something angled. Put a screw that way and a screw that way. Um, they are threaded, unfortunately. So we've got to be careful getting them tight. We have to use fine thread screws. Um, but I think it's going to work. So we'll get some of these started and try to run them down into here without stripping out the plastic of the body. So we saw how long those screws were that RC four-wheel drive had in there. It's always a challenge when you're trying to do threaded stuff through threaded stuff. But definitely... I think something like this is the play because this is it's just too convenient you know these are the right size um we got the angle 
long ways that way, pushing it away from the truck a little bit so it doesn't fit quite as far up underneath like a roll pan would. So now we just gotta hold all this together and see what see how we've done. Sorry for the noise, it is really windy here today. I need more. Oh, don't scratch the paint. All right, let's see how we've done. I dig it. I think the positioning's pretty good. It sticks away from the body, so it's not gonna. It kind of overlaps where the body's notched out for the bumper. It's not too wide. We've got a little bit of gap. Let's see how it looks from the front. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Doesn't stick out any further than the stock one did, and it's a little bit thinner. It looks a little more refined. I dig it. Let's uh, see what we can do about the front. I was just digging through here again, looking for some two-sided tape. This is off of some drift car. That might work as well. You might could even use like a standard one of these and just drill a hole where you need it. Um, it already has one on the bottom. Bolt that, well, you'd have to use a grub screw to attach that to the bumper, but yeah, lots of options to mount stuff. That's, that's pretty easy. Looks like the front's gonna be a little bit more involved. So I gotta do some digging for some parts. All right guys, so here's the front situation. So RC4 drive one is held on with three screws in those three mounts. Um, it's very rectangular. The Traxxas one is a little more rounded. You can see I've already notched out the inside because it was sticking out way too far. So we could pretty easily right here make a thin piece of metal or even plastic or carbon fiber or something that could bolt in all five of those holes and attach the bumper. You'd bolt it from to here from the back and knock stuff off and then you bolt from the back end to the bumper and that would work pretty well but i'm having another idea <laughs> an easier idea i'm just going to drill a hole in the middle i'm going to put a license plate on this and i'm going to put one screw and a bolt through it and i've kind of looked at it from the front trying to get the height and everything where i like it and i think that's the route i'm going to go and it, it fits nice and tightly in there um, i need to square out my notch a little bit more right here in the bottom and uh, allow it to set to that square mount. That way we're not hacking up anything. I've locked around the shop. I've looked for just scraps of things. Um, that's not big enough. I was thinking of even using some of the plastic from the Traxxas bumper mounts. Um, they have the same width front to back, but actually we might be able to just clamp that on right there. Well, hold your horses. Maybe we're on to something here. Not be able to modify this instead of drilling a hole in the bumper. I mean, I was going to cover it with a license plate anyway. Here in Texas, we got to have front plates. So I'm thinking one screw to rule them all. But I think if I chop these off, chop the hitch off, cut this back so it fits around that, and then we can just bolt this around. I don't know if that'll actually hold. All right, guys. I love it when a plane comes together. Um, it does, you know, it's a little wide. It doesn't stick out any further than the stock one but it is just not as thick i can get that lined up maybe well not as it sticks out as far as the big bumper guard things on this one but it's so thin it's it's a little more streamlined i like it it has a little bit of adjustability because of uh, the way it sits with the body so what i did this is the stock mount for the traxxas bumper i think it was off the rear bumper and I cut the post off of it. I cut the hitch off of it. And basically it's kind of centers and lines with this. It slides over that piece and basically just clamped it to that front center mount. And it's wedged against the upper bumper trim piece. It's not going anywhere. So genius. Now we just got to hope it clears the frame rails in the front. I'm thinking they should fit under it. So hopefully that's not an issue, but this is on my chassis. I don't think there'll be any issue with the RC4 drive one. Now I'm looking at it. There's nothing in the way. Yeah, you've got plenty of space for it. So I'm going to wipe all my greasy fingerprints off this thing, put it back on the body, see how it looks. Well, it was a good idea. Um, it's completely in the way of the chassis. <laughs> I was thinking we were going to go up under it, but that's where the, the grill starts. Then. We're not setting that low. So back to the drawing board. Like I said, that'll work on your TF2s and stuff, but it's not going to work on this chassis. All right, so here's my plan. Since this truck is one of the prototype chassis, it's not, uh, you know, there's no, no, definitely don't feel bad cutting it up. So two things, since we're running the motor tray, we don't need a scale engine in here. So as long as our steering doesn't interfere with the 540 motor, uh, we can move the steering mount back and I can chop these rails down half an inch and this thing will sit on there just fine. 
and you know this is i'm building my show truck so <laughs> my shop truck out of this so if we want to chop the rails down we can you can too on yours it's just all up to you these things are fully customizable um let me find a motor and we'll see make sure we got plenty of room i mean we have holes pretty much everywhere on this the production car trucks don't have as many holes there's a couple spaces here and there so you might be limited on doing this with yours but i've got it i'm gonna do it i already chopped the back of the frame down so the tailgate can open and uh, we're good to go on that all right one thing also i didn't mention earlier i did have to trim a little off the top of the transmission mount to clear that engine tray just that little top screw hole um, we'll see how the transmission fits that i may because i don't want to cut up the 80 dollars transmission <laughs> Um, I've got another one of those coming, I believe, too, for this truck. Um, but yeah, I am gonna tear this truck completely down, and we're gonna paint the chassis and detail it out once we're once we're there. Um, but yeah, I moved this back two holes. I shaved off the front, ground them down, nice and smooth. You can see our motor placement. We've got tons of space up here. If you bend those wires out of the way, our servo arm will be right here, be perfect in line with our uh, TL01 spindles. So. No harm, no foul. I get asked all the time too. These are what I like to use. They're cheap. Um, this one, not having to be inside of the SSD scale engine, you could uh, throw some big bad brushless system on here, or two in one even. That may be the route we go, put a two in one on this. Well, I don't wanna smoke these tires off though. I don't know. Lots of options. Having that engine bay, uh, we don't have to worry about the scale engine build anymore. So we'll focus all that on the other truck and uh, go from there. All right, so it just needs a coat of wax and we're ready to go. <laughs> so I think that's the plan. This truck is going to be my build with my chassis. I'm going to use the old prototype chassis since we've already cut it up and done stuff with it. And um, yeah, that'll be next for that. I'm waiting on the transmission and drive shafts. I've ordered some drive shafts finally. And uh, yeah, we'll get this one running, driving, paint the chassis, deck it out real clean and, and shiny. And then I'm going to use the blue truck uh, it's kind of the demo. I'm going to get it, finish getting it running and driving. It's almost there. I need to drive shaft and uh, ESC and radio. That's about it for it, that one. It just needs electronics. And that'll be the one that uh, let people touch at events and things. <laughs> this one's obviously it, black. It's going to show fingerprints way worse. Um, but yeah, and then maybe eventually we'll get to the interior once we get the chassis all done and finished. And uh, it is a little bit tricky with these uh, RTR bodies. I've seen a lot of people having issues getting the windows unglued and stuff out of them. Um, but yeah, it looks cool black on black right now. The other one definitely needs some interior work because the black with the blue isn't really a, it's not even really a factory color. But I, I can see this having like a brown interior or something kind of old school bench seat, stuff like that. Um, I actually was talking with uh, Wayne the other day about some uh, actual wood grain for the door panels and the dash and some ideas about that. Um, I did want to share with you the rear bumper is Traxxas 8136 and the front bumper is Traxxas 8137 and of course their labeling is horrible it doesn't say which vehicle that actually fits uh, according to where I bought these I think I got it at a main I think I was through a main and uh, it said this was for their square body k5 blazer I believe I don't know. They got a few different variations, and I'm not up to date on tracks of stuff at all. So it is what it is. Let me clean up some of this mess, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about some more square bodies. All right. So back to the build off, RC four wheel drive build off. I'm still torn. I want to build two trucks. And like I said, I got two chassis, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> the other truck, I want to do a show truck again. I want to do like my Toyota. I want to do the wheel. I've already bought wheels and tires. I'm not going to lie to you. They looked so good on the black body when I mocked it up. Um, now that we've got the bumpers and stuff on that chassis, I can't just swap it over and take a picture. It's a little more involved, unfortunately. So, of course, we need to build a whole truck. So, I've been leaving that chassis stock. Um, yeah, we're, we'll see how that plays out. But this one, this is the chassis that the blue truck came on originally. This is the one that we lowered and changed the shocks and got it sitting a little bit lower, a little more right for a six inch lift and 35s maybe um, we got the boom racing wheels on it um, we did the patina on the body i messed up on that i was trying to do all that while the, right before all the kit parts came in and i had to do all that stuff so it's kind of rushing i forgot to paint the window trims before i sealed it with the matte clear so now it's got the rush streaks on it and that enamel will not stick to that stuff so 
it's going to be a challenge to do the detail work. And we got time. I mean, I got till March 31st on that build off. Um, waiting on the two piece grills to come back in stock. I really love that other grill. I like that your model better a whole lot. Um, and this is a pain in the butt to try and paint all in there and, and keep your chrome. I tried something. So when we did the Red Cat hauler, I took all of the chrome parts, except for the wheels, and I scuffed them up with a scotch Brite pad, and it made it look like stainless steel. And this stock grill is apparently so thin that we got down the plastic way too quick, and I messed up a couple spots on it. I was just kind of testing. Uh, you can see that corner is a little bit white. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera, but it didn't look stainless enough. And then it, when I was getting close, it wore through to the, to the white plastic. So just using that for mock-up, I was tired of having no grill in it. My original plan was to take the lenses and the uh, engine bay and stuff out of the black body and use it on this one, but now we've found a home for it. So, not sure what we're going to do. I, I'm really happy with how the patina came out. Um, it's got some really nice details on it that just are fantastic. And that video is already on YouTube. It will be. I think it goes out tomorrow, but for the time of filming, you know how it is. So, that's the story on this. That's my plans for the build-off. I'm thinking... I'm just going to do two trucks. This one's going to be my build-off build. -off build. <clears throat> it's going to be kind of a patina truck. going to be stock. I've already painted some of the interior. I'm waiting on some more stuff with that. I'm going to do a bench seat. Uh, going all out on the interior on it. Trying to bring in a lot of detail. Since I haven't had to do interior on the blue and the black one because they're RTR, <clears throat> we're going to take this one a little bit further. So for the other one, I'm hoping that I can find me a red body and have the whole trifecta of uh, pre-painted Scottsdale's because I want a shiny truck with the show truck look. Uh, you remember the Toyota? <clears throat> I don't mean to bring a Toyota into our square body time, but this style is just cool. And I could steal parts off of this and make one right now, but I don't want to tear this truck up because it's it's done. Um, and it's expensive, so I definitely, I'm not going to win a build off with a truck like this. So that's just going to be one for fun for me since I've got the chassis and I want to I want to do it. We can do it over time because we're going to need a lot of shocks and shock boots. And this, this was a pretty expensive build. So, but that's, that's kind of where, where I'm at on my square body situation. Um, updates on the other square bodies. I think the long bed's done. I'm not, I'm not going to mess with that truck. That truck is, it is what it is. It's too cool the way it is to ever change. It's axial based. It's fast it jumps. It actually works. Looks pretty good. It's maybe a little overdone, but it's uh it's a fun beater. I can take that truck out. Full interior, do crazy stuff with it. That's that's my rig for Axial Fest every year, I guess, since that's the only Axial I have. And uh, yeah, it's it works out. I've, I've never kept an Axial rig. I always get, build it and get tired of it because I don't really crawl. I, I trail occasionally, but mainly for me, it's just a building. So having an Axial platform like that that was already built and just getting to do the body and the fun stuff on it, that was really, uh, that was really how I like to build it. So that one I think will stay around indefinitely. Um, it's got a lot of memories with it and a lot of good times. Plus, it's kind of a one-off deal, long bed. It's got the right tire and wheel. I'm, I, I love that truck. The Blue Blazer is done. That's just my beater. Uh, that truck, we've I've recently added this, a second rear leaf because we broke in the main leaf finally and put those breaker 155 wheels on it with the uh, uh, Element General Grabber tires that uh, Jeremy painted the white letters on for me. And that, that truck is just perfect. It's just fun to drive. The new Blazer, I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't even got to drive it yet. Um, I swapped in a good servo, put on the tires and wheels, did some mods to the suspension, got it sitting right. I mean, it's a built truck. It's just got a brush motor. It's ready to go out and test. I just don't, again, I don't ever go drive anywhere uh, other than events. So maybe we can get that one down. I'm going to the Georgia Rock Zombie Zombie Palooza May 8th and 9th, or 9th and 10th, I think it is. It's the weekend before my birthday. And I uh, mean, Jeremy are going to be out there. So I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to bring more rigs to events. I've got that newer truck now. And I've, yeah, it's always a battle trying to bring everything. Now I've got all the kits and stuff to bring as well. And uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff to haul across the country. But we'll figure something out. Um, one last square body. One that really started all of this. I built this truck. Well, I started building this truck four or five years ago and the uh, blazers first came out and there were people were converting them to trucks and all of that and it's on the tto2 chassis it's fast it drives actually really good on road um, drag racing and stuff with it it's the og the wheels i think now looking back it's it's got a look but 
I think we need to do away with the rake. Get it set and level because it looks more like a bag truck. Because now we've got super scale stuff like that. That truck could set just a little bit lower with that small tire. Look spot on. This one looks a little bit more like 24s now. <laughs> Looking back. These are 2.2s, but we've got a lot of rubber on there. There's not any real good 2.2 tires. Traxxas makes these, which are about 2.2s, but they don't have... You can't really buy the tires and wheels separate. They all come pre-glued, and it's just... It's silly. Um, those tires would probably work pretty well on this kind of wheel, but again, that's just this was a precursor to where we're at now with the kits. Um, I felt bad I did steal the license plates off of this earlier for the black truck. That's how much I like that black truck. So I don't know what the future holds for this one. Um, maybe we throw it on one of the new chassis and actually do a step notch to fill in this rear and do a full bag setup on it or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, this is the OG. Got the hidden hitch, the bondoed tailgate handle. <laughs> Rusty and crusty. Uh, the last thing we did to that was add toolbox for the battery. It was a nice little addition. It pretty well tidied up the truck. There's nothing left to do on it. Short of completely changing everything. But it's pretty cool. I, I did this, and I, then a lot of folks started stretching touring cars and doing this kind of stuff, and... Now we've got the kits to bring the scale to this, I don't want to say genre, but this this type of build. To bring the scale chassis to come with the scale looks, the scale stance, and getting more people thinking about RC cars like real cars. And then that's going to help grow the hobby, and things are going to change more realistically in every direction. And that's that's what we're trying to do here. Working with companies like RC Four Wheel Drive. I've been not really partnered with them for years, but we've worked together on a few things here and there, and they... You know, they listen to the feedback. They listen to the, they read the comments in the videos when I review a TF2. And they, you know, they've changed that. The last two TF2s had suspension mods done similar to what I did in the videos. And uh, they work a whole lot better out of the box. And that's going to help more people stick with it. Because most guys go from an SEX10 to a TF2 and it's stiff as a board. And they're like, leaf springs suck. And they all sell it and go back to Axial. <laughs> but making more scale options is what it's all about. Um... Yeah, this this it just worked out magically with the shop truck kit coming out. Uh, about the same time, RC Floor Drive dropped another Scottsdale. It was completely unintentional. Um, it could have been on the same day, but I, I held it back a day because I, I had to do stuff for them and promote and videos and all of that for the new truck. But um, it's just been a wild ride, guys. And this is, uh, I think we're, we're just getting somewhere. I thought the Rat Rods kits were a big step. And then seeing the response to this kind of truck, I, I shipped... 100 kits and i've seen i'd say probably 60 of that were new customers i haven't bought a rat rod before so a lot of new folks into it a lot of folks want to do scale truck stuff they want to do realistic looking rc stuff and that's that's my goal with this is to make this like a running driving model car like a 125th scale model that detailed where you can put it together paint every piece and it's still run and drive that's that's what we need to get in this hobby that's where the direction needs to head and uh RC four-wheel drive has been doing that with the bodies and leaf springs and scale suspensions for four-wheel drive. So now I'm trying to get, steer things towards that in the two-wheel drive area because it's not all crawlers out there. There's a lot of on-road. The drift scene is huge. Drift guys love all this cool custom car stuff. I mean, it doesn't, it, I don't know if you really want to get this out there and drift. I don't think you can get the angle you need and it's heavy and it's <laughs> steel and it's solid body, but you know, people might want to try and that would be cool to see drag cars, whatever. It's just a versatile platform, just like the real truck. You can turn it into whatever you want it to be. So I'll end my big rant there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support again with the kits, guys. I was blown away how fast they sold out. Um, I can't thank you guys enough. And I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with these things next. Seeing what you guys do with them. What you guys come up with. I know there's some folks, a couple folks that are working on headers for these kits already. And uh, wheels and tires. There's a lot of stuff that the market needs to help support this kind of kit. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing some of that before long. But again, thank you guys for following along all these years and this crazy journey I found myself. And uh, get out there and do something fun with the hobby. Think outside the kit, keep it scale, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.